Hi, everybody. Alright, this is interesting because I've not done this very much, but uh, thinking this is a very useful thing to do on launch day of Rebel 6. So I have to figure out how to get the chat window up here in the user interface. So let's see if I can figure that out. Can we pin this? No, that disappears. Okay, so you can see that now, um, which is really not super helpful. Um, enable preview. Oh. Okay, I guess we'll just go back and check it sometimes. Um, okay, so we need to pick some thing from Pinterest. Uh, we're not going to do that. Thanks. All right, let's pick something that we want to draw. Um, this is fine. Okay, we're going to drag this image over into the reference image area. So we're going to go window and choose reference images and we're going to hop over to Pinterest and we're going to drag this over into references. Thank you, Pinterest. All right, let's see. Um, photo retouching services, this guy. Um, let's see. Let's drag this one over as well. All right. Okay, and let's make this bigger. Uh, I find drawing open mouths to be especially difficult. And I'm trying to do something I, I want a little bit more width on the side of her face, so we probably won't use this one. Right, so let's go ahead and close the main reference images and let's hop back over here. And let's change our canvas size. I'm going to pull this up.
accidentally changed this when I was moving this reference image over. Okay, all right, that looks pretty good. And uh, what we can do is we can put this on the canvas like this. And let's do um, about this scale. And And we're going to add a few guides here. So we're going to go um, from here to here. Let's do top of the head to the bottom of the head, across the mouth, the height of the mouth, width of the nose at the nostrils, width of the eyes. The inner width of the eyes with the eyebrows and hairline <laughs> and jawline <laughs> all right okay that's good for now and presumably here okay all right that works Okay, let's change the canvas size. And let's zoom out a little bit. Image size or canvas size. We're going to leave that one for right now. And open this back up. All right, um, let's do this again. Here, here, width of the mouth, height of the mouth, chin, width of the eyebrows, forehead, top of the head, the bottom here. I think that's pretty good. Give me an idea of what to do here. Okay, so we're going to turn off the visibility here. We'll have these guides, uh, which is fine. And let's go ahead and start drawing. All 
All right, so I'm going to use my favorite brushes actually, and I'm going to uh, hide some of the UI because this is how I normally draw. So I press tab, you can see the keyboard shortcuts right down here. All right, and let's see, let's pick a different color. And we'll choose black for now. And this is the top of the head. This is the hairline. And this is the jawline. And so here. And we have a general face shape. This is a huge help to me because normally I get this wrong, like all the time. I really struggle with this. Let's zoom in on her face. And go here. And eyes are, oh yeah, we did inside line of the eyes and outside. So you can see how wide they are. Yeah, I, I very frequently uh, get the uh, positioning wrong and end up redoing over and over and over again these different uh, positions. So this is a big help for me. Okay. And as I mentioned before, I really struggle with drawing an open mouth. So I picked this one on purpose. And that's close enough for now. Okay, so we're going to change the canvas texture because for a pencil sketch, this is a little bit too much. So I'm going to bring this down to 25%. And let's actually see if this is the canvas type. I like um, hot pressed for pencil drawings. Okay, that looks good to me. And you'll notice here that the lines are going to be different because the canvas texture is different. All right, so this is our base one we're going to let's not duplicate we're just going to make another layer and put it on top and do some more uh, refined work um, what i normally do is i normally do a little bit more sketching detail and then come back but i'm going to fill in color today so we're going to put this layer underneath and we're going to sample some color here and we're going to switch to a different brush just to make sure we're using favorites Let's bring this to the middle and we're going to go to preferences and set tablet to in the center of the screen. We're going to turn off show only one panel. Although uh, it might be fine. Um, all right, so liner, this is what we're going to use. Let's check its settings. Uh, I actually turn water off uh, for my style, at least right now. Let's hold control. We're going to increase opacity so we get the real color and increase the size. And uh, I think we have this set to glaze and we don't want this liner to glaze. We want it actually to be um, non-glazing. So far, so good. Almost perfect. Look at that. Okay, 
Let's see. Let's try and do this in a single pass so we don't have build up here. If we have a little build up, we'll go back and smooth it out. Uh, all right, so we'll use four. That's naked, so we're gonna do a little tiny string right here so everyone knows she's not naked. <laughs> okay. And let's focus in up here. Let's do a little bit of hair color. shapes in. I don't like that this is stacking, building up color. So we'll try and fix that in just a moment. And I have, uh, I'm using a Surface Laptop Studio, and I really like, let's see, I really like that uh, when I use the Tablet API, this is preferences, this is Windows 8 plus pointer. So here, Tablet, Windows 8 plus pointer input allows me to do simultaneous pen and touch. Um, that means that I can, I can draw I can be drawing and then press the space bar and move the canvas or zoom in or out uh, or just brush shy, size really easily. Uh, really makes this a nice process. Okay, so we're gonna blend that down. And just a little bit of depth here. Color. Oh, here's the issue. This is set to uh, transparent and actually should be set to opaque for it not to uh, do that kind of glazing effect. All right, so let's pick here this lighter color. There we go. All coming together. So let's put a little bit more attention on the face and we'll blend this area a little bit and add a few little strands here that sample from over here Turn this light back on. All 
We have some water here, so let's go back. Let's dry the canvas and then let's um, go back to favorites and use the liner. We'll shrink the size here. So I'm using um, actually one of the betas. So there's a couple different things here that are going on. Um, so when you are switching from a favorite brush into um, color picking, then it will switch back to uh, off your favorite brushes. Spend just a minute more on the hair, and then, then let's move on. check YouTube here <laughs> all right I don't know about that All right, let's fix this area over here. And uh, we're gonna sample some color. And let's contour her face a little bit. So I'm gonna pick a little darker color. And I'm gonna open up the UI just to make this a little bit easier for new people to understand what's going on. And we're going to add some shadows here on the face. I uh, typically do everything on one layer. Um, there's a lot of times where I'll, I'll do uh, one layer for hair and uh, I like that process. It gives me a chance to, to play around with it and going over the top without affecting the uh, colors be below, but uh, did not do that today. And I think we'll probably continue to not do that today. And a lot of this we're gonna blend, so we're really just putting in kind of the widths. And I'm gonna make her nose a little less narrow because um, it looks too narrow. <laughs> if this girl is watching, I apologize. Oh, you know what? I have a brush that I like using for this. Let's use the Dodge brush. So one of the things in Rebel 6 that I like is that there is the option now for, um, should not be subtract, it should be multiply. There we go. Um, a highlight and a dodge multiply one. Is that what we want, that color? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we need to save as default so it doesn't do that again. So, um, as you can change the blending modes of the individual brushes, um, how certain things are layered and stacked, and I, I really like that. You can see how this is building up. 
is a nice saturated brown. It's not losing color. And while this is darker here, we can get there, but it's not just a straight um, black. Like I said, retaining some of its color. Okay, so I like that here underneath the shoulder. If I want to make it blacker later, I can do that. Rosy warmth. And let's do a little bit up here. All right, in general, this is, I think, kind of the face shape that we're seeing. Right, it looks pretty good. Let's go back to the liner. A sample from the lips. Put a little bit of this color in here. And um, I've been learning a lot in drawing. And I almost always make the teeth like way too white, and they are not white. So it's important to remember that because otherwise it looks like they are flying out of the mouth instead of recessed. All right, we're going to leave those alone. Uh, one of the things that I typically do when I'm drawing is I will uh, do the eyes relatively early on um, so that I am motivated to do the rest of the artwork. All right, so this is blending a little hard for me, so we're going to adjust this. Um, and anything in the favorites brushes, this, by the way, does not uh, destroy the brushes over here that you took from. Okay, so we're going to look at blend, and we are going to actually take this out a little further. So I can blend just a little softer and smoother. Uh, this can also be done by changing the shape here to something fuzzy, but we're not going to do that right now. We're going to leave it just a little bit rough. Smooth these things out again as we get further along in the process. And we need to add some highlights. Um, I like that there is uh, these bun modes because I can actually go in here and highlight. Uh, and what I'm doing is I'm using a brush that has the uh, paint blending set to color dodge. And so here again, I'm able to create these highlights without having to actually pick a color, which I, I really appreciate. And it's not, I'm not just adding white, I'm actually adding um, a dodged version of the selected color. All right, so this is a little bit more detail than I want, but we can see the general shape looks pretty good. Now, um, you want to flip your canvas often so you can see whatever mistakes you make. And you can do that over here as well. And it shoots pretty good in both directions, but we're going to make some adjustments here. And 
and uh, we're going to start putting in some more refined lines. So I'm going to do this on a layer right above and start doing the eyes up here. So we're going to zoom in here, her eyes and her eyebrows. So I'm going to switch to Pentel and we're going to increase the opacity all the way up. We're going to sample her eyebrow color. Again, we're checking our reference points. This is coming in a little bit, so I need to come to the left a little. And uh, this is darker over here, so I'm going to resample. So when I'm doing eyebrows, I like to uh, actually pull color, so I'll make it a little bit thinner smaller brush, and then I'll pull color up and in to create a little bit more of uh, hair with more than one color in it. Okay, so now this layer right here, we're going to turn the opacity down, so we're not seeing that quite so much. All right, let's go back to painting. And let's make sure we're on the right layer. Let's lock this one. Okay. Her mouth really bothers me, so we're going to clean this up a little bit. Just so it's a little bit less. Disturbing. So I'm holding down the four key, as you can see, <laughs> right underneath here. And uh, this allows me to uh, just use that mode only while I'm pressing that key down. Let's switch to dodge so we can get this a little darker. Again, I like doing this without changing the color. All right, and back to liner. And press one so that we're painting again. Let's select our color here and just make this a little bit more lip shaped. It's going to be a little too big on the top, but it'll be fine for now. So looking at the angle here, let's drop the water down and dry the layer. Let's undo that. So I'm not working with watercolor today. And dry immediately. Okay, um, and then we're going to paint modes. Now we're going to go ahead and save this as default so this doesn't come back up. Okay, here. Or to cut in. We want this to actually blend a little bit out because the transition on the lips is not uh, totally f flat from one color to the next next color.
And there is actually a dedicated um, blend tool here that does a really soft, nice job of blending. Uh, but like I said, we're not going to do that just yet. Uh, however, let's add that blend tool. Let's add this blend tool to our favorites. All right, there we go. So now when we go over to our favorites, which is, you can see the keyboard shortcut, Shift plus B. You can just select it here. Um, this a little bit to get it to blend the colors a little bit better. All right, mouth is not as disturbing as it was, so let's go ahead and focus again on the eyes. And I'm going to sample here. Shape. to do a little bit of this cat eye makeup, something I prefer. Sample right here, bring this color up, and blend a little bit. And this has got a little bit of a purple hue so what we can actually do is while this color is selected, we can choose this other option here. Um, this is mix colors. That's right here, mix colors, hold X. And what we're going to do is we're going to sample towards purple. So notice that this is going to change just a little bit, just a little bit. You can see we get that nice purpley tone. Good. All right, and let's make this nice. Okay, and I can see, looking at my guides here, that I'm I'm too low on the eye. The eye should be higher. That this, you know, this is a bit lower here. So we're gonna lasso select before we get too far into this, we're going to lasso select and we are going to bring this up. So lasso select and then choose transform then move up. All right, proportionately, does that look pretty close? Nope, it's in more. You see that inside line and this line is looking pretty good that is just below the iris. Okay, so we're going to say that that's okay. We're going to click enter and then deselect. Okay, so now when we get to the other side, we need to remember that. All right, uh, since we're blending again, um, well, we can just do this. That's what I normally do. Switch to blend mode and you're going to lose a little bit of saturation uh, unless you're careful with how you you do this blending. But in general, this is pretty good. We'll go over this again. Uh, if you're painting on a white canvas, you are going to lose uh, some opacity, typically when you're blending. Soften this up just a little bit. Very cute little nose.
All right, let's go ahead and turn off this bottom layer. We have this little mistake here, so let's go ahead and actually blend this out versus erasing. All right, a sample, some eye color, some eyeball color. It's the same color pretty much as the teeth. So I did a lot of eye studies, and we're looking at the width here, the width here, and um, I really like Arachne Nader, his style, it's just got this extra dark ring. It's not really extra, it's just a very pronounced dark ring in the center, just outside of the pupil. So we're probably going to do something like that. Okay, that looks good. And uh, again, here for these, I'm actually using my dodge to create the darkness here on the eye. See how nicely that does that? Make it even darker right here. And then let's go ahead and sample and switch back to liner. Nope, pen down. Uh, something we can do is we can turn on the nano pixel. So we're working with a, a nicer zoomed in image. All right, we're going to make this dark again, so I'm going to pick Dodge, and uh, that's a little darker than I want, so we're going to drop the opacity. So that is Control and drag down. And let's draw a pupil here. And I'm drawing it with opacity because this outside ring here, which actually exists in the eye. We're going to let that happen naturally. We're going to choose highlight and we're going to zoom way uh, in on the brush size. And what you can see is we're adding some lightness and saturation, which I like. And that's a little more saturated than I want though. So we're going to go here. And uh, what we can do is we can sample up here with the mix one. So we have this right here. We're going to sample this brown. We're going to pick it. And then we're going to click up here to lighten it up. And here we zoom in on her eye. Not a lot of detail. So we're going to create that detail on our side. Let's drop the opacity. All right, so this inside ridge catches a lot of light. You can see the light is coming from the right side, so that means this ridge right here is going to catch a little more light. It's going to be a little bit more. drop off here. So we're going to go ahead and paint that in. And we're going to actually put our whites right here. And we're going to pick white versus do it some other way. Right, that's good for now. Uh, let's go ahead and darken right here. Uh, but we need some, something other than the white to darken it with. Now, if you're using these and you note that the size is not staying or the opacity is not staying, then click on right here, 
save volumes and paint modes into preset presets. Okay, we're going to drop the opacity a little further and um, jump back over here. All right, and that looks pretty good. Uh, let's go ahead and leave the eyelashes. We're not gonna do any of that right now. Let's go to the other side. Uh, let's put in her nostrils. We're using the guides again here. And the opacity is low. Let's just bring this up a little bit. All right, now we can copy this right eye and put it over here on the left side, but uh, we're not gonna do that because we have these guides here. All right, so let's go back to Pentel. And uh, we can change these guides to make them a little easier to see. Snapping lines, canvas, guides, let's make width two. Um, actually, this might be reference image guides. Reference image guides here at the bottom. All right, let's select an easier to see color and increase the size here to two. Mm, let's make it a different color. three. Yeah, that's easier to see. All right, so we're using Pentel. Let's go ahead and sample this dark color again and bring the brush size down a little bit. All right, so we're looking at the alignment here. Let's draw this first. That size looks accurate, which makes this eye look giant. Is that eye giant? Yeah, it's kind of giant. Um, no, it's fine. Okay, let's leave it. We'll fix it after we get the other stuff marked out. Keeping track of this. This looks like an eagle. That's a different color. It's a little more rich brown. And on the other one, we did this with the Dodge, because it has a little opacity. And we created a little bit more of that ring here. And let's drop the opacity a little bit. And create our shadows. Let 
that's fine. And we should have probably done our eye whites beforehand. Uh, so we want to pay attention to where this line comes over this one. So, and we actually want to use this color too. So we want to cut off the bottom of this if it's cut off over there. This little plane right here catches light and underneath it we have this area. Now, while we're painting here, we want to keep in mind that um, we're not on the same layer as the color. So if we're trying to blend this color underneath, it's not going to work. Uh, unless we go to the right layer. We'll leave some of these color adjustments until after we merge the layers. All right, so here. Again, we have a little bit more of a purple, so we're going to go here. I'm just going to adjust that just a little bit. Okay, now we should be looking at these to see how the eyes line up. We're going to flip our canvas. This is looking pretty creepy. <laughs> See unlisted, of course. This is so ridiculous. Did the first hour of the stream with the video set to private. Oops. I'm like, not a single viewer, and that's amazing, on launch day. Okay, let's quickly fix this because this looks so bad. All right. So this eye, we're going to shrink. Okay. 
Let's give her an eyebrow on both sides. Uh, okay. Alright, we want to be using Pentel. Good. Here. I want this to go here. And block it in and add the details. The outside. And here. Just to be too thick. Let's zoom in here. So I do this and then I make it a thinner brush and then turn on blend and then I push up in order to create a little bit more of a hair push up and push out hair feeling there like that. All right, we need to make this look less hideous make this nose look a little better. Uh, okay, actually there is a liquify tool in Rebel 6, so let's look at it and use it here. Okay, so uh, this is better makes more sense. Okay, so let's try and get these proportions correct here, and I'll I'll, I'll do more of these uh, coming up so that that the uh, process will be a little bit more clear and and easier to understand. All right, so let's move these eyes to the right spots. Uh, no, we're going to use the uh, new liquify tool and see if we can fix this. All right, so liquify, let's adjust the size here. And uh, let's move Make sure that you're not on smudge. There's a big difference between those two things. Right, I'm using a flat. Let's change that. It's a big difference between which brush you use. Okay, this is really helpful because in the past, I have done all of this manually by nudging uh, everything and then having to fill in all the colors to make sure things are right. Okay, so we have some lines here on other layers. So let's go ahead and nudge those lines in. Oh my goodness, so much better. All right, let's merge these layers so we're not doing so much guesswork in between. Uh, 
<laughs> Oops. Um, I wish I could put the chat window somewhere where I could see it, but I'm not sure how to do that yet. Maybe in the next one. Okay, let's adjust this nose. Okay, let's use push and decrease the size. Whoops. There you go. Expand anymore. I just want to nudge and move. Um. It's looking a little more balanced. The eyes are very, very different. So let's go ahead and fix that. <laughs> it's nice when you're painting alone and you don't have people watching all the intermediary um, terrible steps. All right, if you guys have questions about Rebel 6, uh, this is a good time to ask those questions as well. All right, let's switch back to favorites brushes. And let's fix this left eye. So one thing that I've always kind of struggled with is getting eyes or understanding is, is that eyes have a shape that the light plays into. So there's going to be dark spots and light spots like you're drawing a sphere. All right, and let's go ahead and uh, use this dodge brush and select a darker color here. I actually really like this. Go here and then we're gonna blend a little bit. Uh, one of the things I was saying earlier in the stream is that uh, Rebel has uh, these really cool painting, um, paint blending modes. I have this one set to multiply which allows me to go over things without uh, covering them to, you know, uh, overlay the effect. Okay, so let's hide this. This eye needs to push up here. Eyes look a little less freaky.
Thank you, Yorana. I don't know if I'm saying it right. Seems it's not available yet. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Um, yeah, I don't think it's available yet. I think it's going to be available soon, but just is not available yet. Uh, I wanted to do this beforehand because I figured people would have questions about the actual software uh, that they would like to have answered before buying it. nose is a little bit more rosy and so we're going to uh, try and fix that here a little bit I know there's uh, a lot of people who when they're drawing they've got these beautiful beginnings and middles and ends <laughs> and my artwork is not there yet usually the beginning and the middle look pretty uh, ridiculous and then eventually at the end it, it looks okay be nice if there was like a beep or something when people comment Okay, uh, favorite brush, got it. All right, so over here, let's say we're using, uh, let's lock this so it's not jumping. Uh, favorite brush here, let's say I'm using uh, 4B, then I click on open right here, the context menu and copy brush pre preset to favorites. Um, also, you can just right click on it and it should have the uh, same are almost the same menu, copy brush pre preset to favorite. And this copies a clone over here instead of copying the same brush that gets affected. So if I change the settings here, it will um, not affect the one that's over in the other um, tool. And I like to make sure that this here, I save volumes and paint modes in the brush preset that this is selected because otherwise I keep switching between brushes and types like uh, some of these, this should always be blending. This one, I want it to always start at a certain place, which is almost always like um, paint for this one. So that should stay, um, but you may need to do save as default for that to stay applied. Um, all right, so let's keep going. And let's make this darker. So on the artist pad, I have both the, um, this is alt for color pick and this is X for mix color. So here, like this area, I'm going to use mix. And what I'm gonna do is this is, well, actually let's start with picking this color. And then we're going to mix, and this is just going to drop it a shade. So we can make this a little darker without making it all the way as dark. You can blend to do this as well. But I like being able to take a color like uh, something from the eyes 
up here we wanted to make this a little more purple. And so instead of um, picking something different, I just took the color that was already here, which is this one right here. And then we came over here and uh, press X and you can pick and make this a little bit more purple. See, purple, purple, purple. And so you can adjust the colors um, gently that way. All right, this area here is definitely uh, too light. Uh, in the beginning of the stream, I was talking about these different brushes here. Uh, by the way, I'm using a beta of Rebel 6, so you're going to see some bugs, and just keep in mind that almost all of these will be fixed in the actual release. All right, so I hold four and blend here. Uh, so what I was saying is here, there's these new options in the brush creator for um, blending modes. So here I have uh, this dodge one. This is my shadow brush and I'm using multiply so that I get shadows that are not desaturated. Uh, I like that to, to have the option of doing a um, a color rich shadow and one that's desaturated and this is my saturated shadow. And so I have this set to multiply and glaze right here and I have a highlights one set to color dodge. So if I come up here I can add, let's do this in the eye so you can see it. So up here if I want to add some lightness without it just simply being white um, but let's let's change this let's make it a let's make it purple. You can see I can add some lightness without like uh, absolutely destroying the underlying color. So here you can see that's some really nice color here. And it adds to what's underneath instead of just simply uh, covering over it. It's a really cool feature. So uh, something you can do is you can use the uh, pixel lock. So I have right here, uh, that's the wrong label. Uh, this is right here, lock transparency. Let's change this. Oh, I see, I'm using an old version of the pen tool too. Right, we're going to use the version three of the pen tool. All right, um, this is called lock transparency. Lock transparency. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. Lock transparency. Lock. All right, there we go. Okay, so here you can lock the transparency and then use like a highlight brush on the outside edge and it's not gonna go anywhere else. Uh, so you can see that we're, this is one of the bugs by the way in Rebel 6 beta is that it switches in between these brushes uh, when you use the color picker. Okay, so we're gonna go back here, highlight, we have uh, transparency lock. We're going to turn that on. Backslash. And now when I come up here, I can paint light on just the edges. And I love this. I think this is super cool. Okay, but we're not going to do that uh, at this point anyway. Okay, so we're going to unlock transparency with forward slash. And that's continue working on her cheek and nose. Right, 
pen and towel. Let's use liner again. And blend this. I think I've made this too light originally. So this, I think, is a little too wide. Here as well. Let's adjust this guide here from corner to corner. And let's go over here and turn reference image guides off and let's turn them back on. All right, let's undo this one and let's do it again. Alright, so I think that means that my mouth is in the wrong spot. Let's move this to center and center. Okay, that means my nose is in the wrong spot. Alright, this is centered here, so let's go ahead and go back to uh, liquify right here. Again, it matters which brush you're using. And let's push this over. too high. Uh, liquify is probably, li liquify in the reference images, um, grids and stuff is probably my favorite features in the new version. I think these are extremely helpful. Okay, so we still need to move this over a little further. This looks funny because we have the nose in the wrong spot too. That looks pretty good. Let's use uh, for the nose. Uh, I think I'm, let's, let's try it here. If I push left, can we make this really big and push the whole thing? Wow. So if you drag down, it pushes uh, right, and if you drag up, it pushes left. Okay, so we need this to go up, so we're going to go back here. This is going to save me so much time.
I probably spend about 30% of the drawing time repositioning things. Um, and in that repositioning things, uh, what I end up doing is um, recoloring. So I'll, I'll use the lasso select and then when I move it, there's a white background underneath and that ends up uh, forcing me to re to fill in the, all that color. Okay, she looks a little raccoony. Uh, proportions. Are closer. Oh, we need to pull in some more of this color. Capacity way down, and uh, again we need to save this as um, default, so that I'm not adjusting these things again and again. Uh, this is the wrong side. bit extreme on the color. Um, I will occasionally do a, a shadow pass on another layer, but we're not going to do that today. We're just going to do everything on pretty much one layer. Let's delete this one again. But let's drop the opacity down here. There we go. That's better. face has been looking very flat, so this is helping. All right, let's blend down here a little bit. And then let's look at the shape of her face.
All right, let's pull some color from here uh, and go back and add some color back in and make sure face looks very uh, puffy, very, very round because of the amount of color or brightness there. Uh, something you can do here, which I, I find pretty helpful, is changing to uh, grayscale. I think it's actually a lot easier than doing the color, which is something I have to work on because I can't get my values right. My personal values. Let's pull this up a little bit. And let's make the Chin, not so bright. Okay, that helps a lot. Uh, okay, so I was talking about uh, grayscale. So here, this does grayscale. And here is grayscale. So if I wanted to really focus on the values here, I could do this and, and really look at this and go, okay, uh, right here, I understand what's going on. This is too bright. Uh, I find this really helpful. Uh, this is way too dark in here. So all of this needs to be lightened up. So we do highlight. This should be bringing it up, but it's probably screwing up the color. So you can see here. So we'd want to do that a different way. So we can actually just simply sample and uh, let's use a different tool. Just make that lighter. And uh, just a reminder again, this is a uh, beta that I'm using right now for this painting. So it's, it's gonna have some bugs. One of the bugs you'll see me run into is when I color pick, it switches out of favorite brushes. So if I use the uh, color picker here, it switches out of favorite brushes.
This is one of the things that I like about Rebel 6 is that it um, they, they continue to try and make the application uh, more useful, not just more feature rich, but more useful for artists, like giving us tools that we need to create better art instead of just novelty things. Like I like the addition of the colors, uh, the pigment colors that were in Rebel 5, introduced in Rebel 5, as well as uh, NanoPixel and a number of things that make printing easier, these grids, uh, reference image grids and guides and everything that really helped me uh, refine the positioning and scale of the paintings I'm doing. Now, I am a, a big fan of those type of uh, adjustments and fixes. All right, let's do that. Check my blending here. Right, so you can see this is helping me, really helping me with uh, the values by switching to grayscale. Have to remember, um, I'm often holding down the number four in order to blend, and then when I release it goes back to painting. And I have to remember that I'm doing that because otherwise I end up painting um, when I'm trying to blend. Starting to come together. I see my finger just slid up. Let's just switch. So the values, the amount of black or white in an image really define uh, what the depth looks like. So if your image looks like um, their nose is flat on their face or whether it's protruding. And so that's what we're trying to uh, accomplish here. better.
these uh, shapes here are always so important to get right. It's always tricky to do that. Um, you know what, actually, I will probably add over here, let's go to um, inks. And that's okay. Let's turn the water off because we're not using water right now. And let's see, I want something darker. Uh, that's gonna probably need to have color turned on for us to see how dark it is. It looks like it's not dark because we are using a not dark color. Right here, let's save. All right, that's good. Okay, now uh, what I'm doing is I am taking this and uh, we are going to adjust the, this is save to brush preset. Yes, if we want, we want pulled string. We're gonna put this up here. And the reason we're doing that is so we can get a really nice pretty line. All right, let's copy to favorites, switch over to favorites, out and round. Let's rename this. We're going to double tap on here and we're going to do, I'm going to call it liner old string. Okay, so this spot over here, let's say we want, um, let's bring the size down. Okay, so that gave us a really nice clean line there on that edge. Uh, over here, we're going to do uh, almost the same thing, but, oops, but we are going to pick from right here. together and uh, we can actually put this on this mode here so we're actually getting a little bit of color pull all right I think we probably can do away with the guides uh, let's make some small adjustments uh, beforehand though All right, so up here, notice that this is lighter. So let's select this. I'm going to push this up. A little bit more forehead. I like the color that we're getting here in the shadows now. We're going to get rid of some of that pink on the uh, eyelid. Yeah, I, I wonder if they'll be able to release it today as well. Reference image guides. Um, I have a feeling that they will, even if it's late. Uh, I think that they will will release Rebel Six today. They already pushed it back. Excuse me for a second. They already pushed back the uh, update 
It was supposed to be out on the 9th originally, I believe. Okay, all right, we have that back. View. Is like um, when the nose carries a little bit of, um, I want to say ambient occlusion, but I'm not sure that's the right term. Basically where it's uh, a little bit see-through and you can see light, uh, you know, like the pinks around the nostrils and tips of the nose where it's just, it's got a little bit more uh, glow and a little bit of translucency to it. Pull the darker colors.
gonna switch to liquify. So nice. Pretty confident I'm doing this the hardest way. Can usually get to uh, nice looking shapes sooner. Nose is starting to look okay. Okay, so looking here and this looks funny. Okay, let's use the multi or the liquify tool for this. Looking a little bit better. Still think her nose is tiny. All right. 
That looks okay. Let's flip it back the other way. And let's see here. This eye looks like it's um, very bulbous. a little bit better. I don't want to make her accent look like she's smiling. Okay, so let's fix her bulbous eye. favorites and let's soften this up there's uh, an art style uh, used in arcane I think I'm saying it right I think it's the League of Legends show on Netflix and they've got a really really neat uh, art style in the animation and it's, it's a computer generated graphics from what I can tell like 3D models with a uh, kind of filter I guess on it that's really remarkable but this uh, eye reminds me a little bit of that
Uh, Rebel 6 is um, not coming to the iPad. Well, that would be really nice. It would be a reason for me to use an iPad. A little closer. All right, let's work on her mouth. Certain phrases that I'm very cognizant of um, saying wrong and I'm having a million different sexual innuendos and that is one of the things right here that I think really is uh, one of the ones to watch. I'm going to try not to do too much detail because um, I'm actually pretty hungry <laughs> and, and want to eat soon. All right, let's zoom in here. She has some interesting orange hues in her mouth that I, I like, actually. So let's... Um, this is going to make it too dark. Let's adjust the opacity down. So we can give a little bit of that orange. There we go. We're just kind of showing up in the top lip here, and we want to kind of feather this out a little bit. So it's not such a hard line. Nice to use a um, <clears throat> higher quality reference image. Would have been helpful. But this is okay. All right, and then I want to take a little bit of this, bring this lightness back up. Just right in there. So the teeth, I'm going to not do too much with them because um, I'm bad at teeth. <laughs> all right, and let's make all of these bottom ones darker. And then 
too much. That's good enough there. And let's carry a little bit of shadow up. All right, I think that's good. Her face looks very flat. Oh, an iPad version would be great. I'm very supportive of that idea. I think it's uh, something I hope they're able to do. All right, so let's do a shadow pass and see if we can get her face to look a little less weird. Uh, I think also her eye shape is inconsistent. So let's go back to the liquify tool. So here her eyes are very almond shaped. And again, I'll state I'm using a beta of Rebel 6, so it is not faultless. It's looks like it saved right before the work on the teeth. Okay, let's go back here. Let's see if we can get this eye shape. Oh, this is very important to note. This is going to do some very different things. Okay, so we want to make sure that we're not using smudge and that we're using soft. Let's see if it'll remember. That shape. So it's in a little bit. I think that's closer. The eyes can, just the, the shape on the eye can make such a huge difference. This weird little thing from Windows. All right, does that look a little better? I 
we need to adjust these again. Check them out. Uh, view, show, reference images, reference guides. Let's put this right in the middle of the pupils. Let's put this right in the dark. Let's put it actually right here. Oh, no, we already have that one. Here. Right there. Okay, that really helps understand why it looks weird. Okay. Let's push this down. All right, her eyes still look a little puppy dog. That's...
let's hide the guides. And let's soften up this area over here. Oh, by the way, this is an option. You can turn on and off the image from the canvas. Look at that, we're actually pretty darn close. You can see what it is you're doing wrong. It's a little softer.
-hmm. Yeah, I have to go here in just a couple minutes. Um, I think there is a lot of problems with this, but it will work for now. strands of hair, little outliers. Let's make it a little smaller. And a little opacity. Um, this is a good time to use the um, pulled string uh, lined pull because you can do these really, really pretty lines. Uh, and I have a tutorial actually uh, on how to do this and use uh, the lock transparency in order to get a much better, cleaner line and you can add lighting to it. Um, let's use the new Dodge and highlight brushes. Let's change the opacity here and see what color we're using. You can see we're introducing some nice actually, color. a little much so we're going to go back to dodge and this way up and just darken sections And uh, actually what I should be doing, see here on the outside, we're getting this going where there's not. Uh, so let's do lock transparency. Now when we do this, it will only go here. Okay, and then we're going to use highlight and go here on the tops as if there was some light coming from over here on the right. Let's see kind of how 
that's working. I really like this part. go and we'll add a little bit more dark on the other side. And let's go ahead and take this off and move this. Um, that's going to be good for now. Um, hey, that's that's okay. All right, guys, um, I plan on having a number of tutorials up on Rebel 6 on this. Uh, let's show these one more time. Let's show them. Okay, so this is way too far. Uh, Rebel 6. So we're going to do a bunch of tutorials here on the site on this uh, YouTube channel. If you uh, use a tablet or a stylus or planning on using Rebel, then subscribe on this channel. The tutorials that I'm going to be doing are going to be um, on the channel for two weeks free for subscribers. Then after that, they will go into the membership catalog so that uh, you uh, will need to be a member to access those. Let's add a little bit more shadow right here. Too much. Just need a little. All right. There we go. Okay, not a bad start. <laughs> All right, guys, have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. If you have questions, put it in the comment section and uh, I will probably be doing one of these tomorrow or Saturday morning.